Okay, so let's talk a bit more about parameters and arguments. And the main question we have to answer for this part is what if you don't know the number of arguments? Can you still make a function? And the answer for that is absolutely yes. Although we do have to learn some new things. And let's do this straight in code. Here I have a completely empty file and I want to create a new function that I want to call print all. And this function should take an unlimited number of arguments. And then inside of the function, I want to print all arguments. But the problem is I don't know how many arguments I am going to get. Now, one thing that you might have already figured out, you could add some parameter called arguments. And this arguments would be a list, meaning if I run print all, and add a list in here with, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, and hello. Now, inside of the function, I could run for argument, that is not how you spell that, in arguments, and I want to print the argument. And this is indeed working. Via the list, we can basically add as many arguments as we want, and this would still be working just fine. There's no limit on this. Although this is kind of annoying to work with. And because of that, Python has a special way to work with unlimited arguments. And this is called, let me add a comment here. It is called list unpacking. And how this works is we are adding a star before the parameter that we want to unpack. And now what I can do when I'm calling the function, I can remove this list here and just have unlimited values. And if I run this now, we are getting the same result. So what is happening here? And I think the best way to understand this is just to print what we get. So let me print the arguments and run the code again. And now you can see we have a tuple with all of these values here. And then later on inside of the function, we are just looping over this tuple and printing each item inside of it. That's all that's happening in here. And that is essentially all the unpacking operator does. It looks at all of the arguments we potentially have and then return all of them as a tuple. And we can use it along with other parameters. For example, if I added another parameter here, let's call it first. I want to print my arguments and I want to print first. And let's see what we get. We get one and then we get all of the other items. Meaning what happened? In this function call here, Python sees that this one here is the first positional argument and we have one parameter. So Python is putting this one in there and then it sees we have a list unpacking arguments and we have a ton of arguments here. So all of these are being stored in this arguments as a tuple. And once we have that, we can work with them inside of the function. And this would also work with a parameter after the list unpacking. Although for this one here, we would need keyword arguments. So let me print the extra parameter here, the one that comes after the list unpacking. If I run this now, we have print all is missing one required keyword only argument extra. And Python here is quite specific. We want a keyword argument for extra. And this extra here, since it comes after the unpacking, has to be a keyword argument. The reason for that is that Python by default doesn't know when this list unpacking ends and when this parameter starts. But, well, we can fix that quite easily. Let me remove the error message. I can assign extra another value, let's say 12, and remove this 12 here. If I run this now, this would be working again. And here are the values we are getting. And with that, we have simple list unpacking. And now we can essentially add unlimited numbers of arguments inside of our functions. Now this you can actually make even more powerful. And how this would be working is with keyword unpacking. And for that, let's create another function. And this, let's call it print more. And in here, 
I again want to have my arguments. And those I want to unpack, but now I want to unpack them again. And those I want to unpack, but now I want to use two stars. And you see in a second why. And I guess inside of this function, let's just print the arguments of what we are going to get. And let me comment out print all, and let's call print more. What this double star arguments does is it looks for keyword arguments and then unpacks all of them inside of a dictionary. So we have arg1 could be one, then we have arg2 is going to be test, and finally we have arg3 is going to be, let's say, a list with one, two, and three. If I run this now, we get a dictionary with three key value pairs. We have arg1 with the value one, arg2 with test, and arg3 with a list. And those are the three arguments we passed in here, or keyword arguments to be more specific. And we're getting this dictionary because of this double star here. Now, so far, we haven't really learned how to work with dictionaries. So we don't really know how to use this dictionary, but we're gonna learn about that in the next major section. So for now, don't worry too much about this. But we are going to work with this quite a bit more later on when we learn more about dictionaries. For now, all you have to understand is if we're using double star and arguments, then we get all of our keyword arguments as a dictionary returned in our function. And what you can also do finally is combine these arguments or the list unpacking arguments and the keyword unpacking arguments inside of one function. And for that, let's create a final function. Let's call this one print even more. And in here, I want to have my arguments and I want to have my keyword arguments. And these args and quarks is what you see quite often. It's just a shorthand for arguments and keyword arguments. And now inside of this function, we could basically pass in whatever we want. It would all be captured by these two parameters. Let me print the args and the quarks. And now I can comment out this function call and add print even more. And now in here, I can just add whatever I want. Let me add hello and true. And then besides that, I can also add, I don't know, test is going to be one, test two is going to be five, whatever you want in here. And now if I execute the code, we get a tuple from the args parameter and the dictionary from the quarks parameter. And even if you didn't add anything in here, so if I didn't have any keyword arguments, it would still work, I would just get an empty dictionary. And that means if you have this kind of setup, as long as you add any kind of parameter that is valid Python code into the function, you are going to execute that function, or at least you're not gonna get an error in this stage of the code. And well, with that, we have covered some really powerful stuff. And let's practice it actually. And what I want you guys to do, let me add an exercise down here. And what I want you guys to do, let me paste it in here. I want you guys to create a calculator function that prints the sum of an unlimited number of numbers or what well, unlimited amount of numbers. So pause the video now and try to figure this one out yourself. All right, let me paste this exercise here. So we have all of our function at the top of the code. And I want to create a new function that I'm going to call calculator. And in here, we want to have an unlimited number of numbers. So I want the tuple or the list unpacking operator, and let's call it args. And now essentially what I am going to get in here is a list. Let's actually print it. So I want to print my arguments. And now let me comment out this function here. And I want to have my calculator and add a random amount of numbers. If I run this now, we are getting a tuple with the numbers we are passing into it. That's a really good start. What we have to figure out now is to get the sum of all of these numbers. And this we can actually do quite easily. Uh, but let me do it over two lines so it's a bit easier to read. I first of all want to create a new variable. Let's call this one the result. 
and the result is going to be the sum of my arguments. Remember here, this argument or these arcs is going to be a tuple and tuples can be used with the sum function. And the sum function is just going to return the sum of all the numbers inside of that list. This list here in our case. And once I have that, I want to print the result. So now if I run this, and we're getting 21. This seems accurate. If you wanted to be more efficient with your code, you wouldn't actually need this result here. So you could just print some of the arguments and not do result at all. Let me comment it out. This one would also work just fine. Although the earlier one was a bit easier to read. So let's stick with this one. And with that, we have a function that uses list unpacking. 